Hey, how's it going everyone? Just want to do a quick follow-up to, um, you know, I was on Jose's channel for a bit near the end and, you know, got heated and sort of animated. I got animated, but, uh, you know, just to kind of summarize some of my, you know, findings and thoughts is just further confirmation that ball earthers, or at least the group that I was interacting with today, hold that, um, you know, across a perfectly flat surface, uh, an object will never disappear at its base faster than its top. And so, you know, and really any any camera orientation, as long as it's above this flat surface, if it's able to see, um, you know, the, the top of something, it's going to be able to see its base as well, you know, equally, quote unquote, clearly all the time. And so the top and the bottom disappear at an equal rate. And, um, you know, we as flat earthers would take a different stance that on a flat surface, you can have the object obstructed uh, and still have the top visible as seen in, you know, many, many images that people are producing. And, um, you know, to me, that's, again, a very, very tangible, um, technical and observable difference in the two camps. And so I, I like that as much as, you know, I get into name calling and stuff. It's like, that's their stance, you know, and really they have to hold that stance because all that stuff that's blocking from the bottom, if it involves optics, then the question would be, um, why are you guys mentioning earth curve? You know, how much of it is earth curve? If it's just optical phenomena that's taking place, then um, where is your earth curve at, you know? And so they go to the extreme statement uh, stance, in my view, that um, it can never happen on a flat surface. You can never have obstruction from the bottom up on a flat surface. And so, you know, we can press them on that. And so, you know, the, their explanation really for the video that I posted, you know, in my hallway is that that uh, that surface is uneven and that's why my feet are disappearing you know at the end of the hallway um you know the maybe two inches or three inches on my up to my sock um you can't see it you know when i'm at the other end or you know, in the very least it's um muddied you know quite a bit and um you know you just you can't see it you know if you pause my my video at the 41 second mark the the video that i posted objects clearly do disappear bottom up on a flat surface you'll see that you can't see my socks anymore. And you and as I'm walking away, it's obvious that you can see my socks right up by the camera. But when I walk away, um, it's becoming harder and harder to see my feet. But obviously I wore a white hat on purpose. You could see my, my hat, you know, you could see the top of my head, um, you know, my whole height, you know, the whole time, you know? And so we that and many other people are putting out videos showing that um, the bottom does disappear faster, you know? and to me, it's common sense. <laughs> it's like the, my feet are against the floor. And so my feet have to compete against the floor with my eye and um, the floor wins at some point. You know, it's just the floor is just naturally easier for the eye to latch onto um, than, than my feet, you know, even across a flat surface. And so it's just optics, it's just squishing, um, you know, my, my feet and the ground into fewer and fewer pixels. Uh, in in the image when it's farther and further away and um, my feet lose <laughs> you know that's just what it is my feet just lose the battle at some point before the my my white hat and uh, that's just the way it is you know and uh, this kind of thing 100 foot hallway and like about 5 foot 10 individual um, the same kind of thing would happen if we're talking about 26 miles across you know um, a water body and um, buildings and mountains and stuff it's the same thing it's the same optics and, um, you know, the ballers would hold in my hallway, it won't work. And then you know, out there, it won't work and all that kind of stuff. And so what I would say sort of just intuitively is that let's just say for now that, that this does hold in my hallway is indeed flat. Um, and all the other people's hallways are, you know, or floors are, are, are flat. And so if my feet are quote unquote, losing the battle faster than my hat, um, you know, when it, when we go out into quote unquote real life, you know, and, um, water bodies and, you know, the, the atmosphere and the sun and all that are more at play. Um, my feet lose faster. It's not like going out into the quote unquote real world that it's going to give my feet an advantage, or in this case, like a, like a boat or a building, uh, an advantage when you have all these other things that are hurting our ability to see things. And so, you know, it makes it, it muddies the water more and more, you know, it's like, uh, the analogy I, uh, I use is like, if I'm, if my feet are losing in the hallway, 
um, you know, they're going to lose by a lot out there because there's more and more things that are clouding the ability for our eye to distinguish two things, especially again, when you're talking about many, many miles. And so um, they're going to lose by more. And so more and more amount of the bottom up is going to get obstructed when you have to deal with all these other things that are happening, mirage and compression, um, atmospherics, you know, just um, the quality of the air, um, the amount of, you know, sunlight and um, all that kind of stuff um, that come into play, you know, not in a well-lit hallway. So <clears throat> that's a, that's a first point. I think that's very tangible and, um, you know, gives me even more and more comfort that this ball earth can't last very long uh, or flat earth can't last very long because that's very, very provable. You know, no one's going to uh, dismiss every single surface that is brought to them um, you know, over and over and over again, because there is an objective way to measure flat, straight, level, and, and have all those three things be the same thing. And, um, you know, it's just, that's just, it's very, very possible. You don't need even a huge budget to do that. Um, and you don't even necessarily need an, ex an incredibly long surface. Just even in my example, like if you had a hundred foot perfectly flat um, hallway, you could reproduce my experiment and, and get the same result. And so even like a hundred feet. And then so, um, yeah, so it's not, it's not outrageous. And so, um, that's uh, that's good. That's reassuring. But then the next thing I want to mention, we're not, what I think it'll graduate to once, you know, maybe ballers or just all of us have a greater and greater comfort that items can indeed be obstructed bottom up on a flat surface is then we would need something that, is less or not dependent on optics. And so again, I've been harping on drones. I feel like strongly that drones will be the uh, sort of missing link. And so I thought of a sort of a reverse test in that you, what we can do is um, create a coordinate system locally, like I said, like use GPS at whatever granularity, ideally like the most precise would be nice to create like a, like a rectangular grid, you know, like just looking at it from the top. You know, like you have like, you know, grid lines uh, going this way, then you have grid lines going that way, and then you have like a checkerboard, and each of those intersection of lines is a GPS point. And so the tighter and tighter that, that those checker checkerboard uh, pieces or um, blocks get, the more granular, the more precise the GPS um, coordinate is. And then you, you know, there's like anything, there's a trade-off, the more money you spend and the more time you spend, you can get a finer and finer mesh grid but um, let's just say we're using even for now just very coarse great gps like on our phone if you can create like a like a 2d um, grid that uh, let's just for now let's take elevation out of it but like you can understand um, those those coordinate um, points on a 2d grid uh, and they're all perfectly flat like if you go in this direction it's perfectly straight this direction is perfectly straight and then this is what happens to the coordinates as you go along that straight line and then you can even use predictive capability and say, yeah, if I keep going straight, I predict that, you know, down the road, the coordinate's going to be that if you move 50 feet down this line. And then that's what the our phone says, you know, it confirms it. So there's self, uh, you know, accountability and, um, you know, built in, you know, uh, checks and balances uh, to establishing this kind of grid. It's not just like you make the grid and you're like, oh, whatever, it's right, you know, good enough. No, you can you can do predictions around the grid outside of this grid and just make sure that it works, you know, when you extrapolate out in all directions. And so that's nice. And so, you know, once we have these straight grid lines, what, what I thought, what, what we can do actually is now um, take a drone that has a GPS reading on it, if we can actually read where it is, or there's a way to get that number from the GPS, from the, the drone, and then just place it in different places um, on top of a water body, you know, even like at the corners or, you know, and, and again, just put it in different places over top of a water body and, and in preferably large, you know, um, area. And again, you don't have to fly it from one place to the other. You literally just have to go and let it rest on top of the water as close to the water as it can get and just take the reading, you know, and then just again, create a big, large sample of um, data points. And I guess actually you don't even technically need a drone for this. You can even use your phone, but something that would, would be equipped with a pretty good quality of a GPS reading, let's just assume a drone for now, but let's just say you could even 
get a more precise thing you know on your phone um, or we could even just start with um, civilian grade GPS like that's on our phone and uh, you know establish all those different points and get the reading and then um, you know see if those readings are, are consistent with that um, 2d uh, rectangular grid uh, that we created you know with with just flat lines or and straight with just straight lines um, this checkerboard and so you know if uh, if the earth is indeed flat those measurements taken across uh, a water body would follow the same um, mathematical, uh, you know, would fall into that same mathematical grid pattern, um, you know, that we created, uh, you know, uh, over land. And so that that's a good way to do it. It's essentially just matching two grids. It's like you create a grid that you feel the shape of the earth is, like a flat um, 2D grid with straight lines, and then go and take samples on what is kind of understood to be flat let's just say for in this case hypothetically that the, the water body and then you know see which see if they match you know and again it won't be perfect because like the water is up and down but you know if you take enough sample points um you know you would be able to sort of average it out and if you, again if you take them wide enough apart um they would not be able to work on uh, two different surfaces you know again if i'm talking like not just far apart i'm talking like 50 60 70 miles because in the flat earth, the water, the major, major water bodies across the earth would be at the same quote unquote level. So the nice thing about this test is you could literally just, you know, go and have people do readings all over the world, you know, and um, tell us what, what are they, what GPS reading are they getting above the water? And, uh, you know, just make a table of like uh, 50,000 points and then um, compare the, that, uh, that, uh, that grid that would be created from all those points and you know put them on sort of an equipotential line and um or, or 2d surface and see if that's consistent with that um localized um 2d flat grid that we made using gps and so if they if they match then uh, that's that's rigorous you know because then all you're you're saying is that the accuracy of that local grid that you've made uh, external to your measurements um as long as that's accurate and truly you know, a flat surface with like, uh, you know, per, you know, straight lines in one direction and straight lines in the other direction. And then, you know, you've even, we've even got somebody to test, test it and move in both directions and show like, yeah, you know, if we project, we predict that if you move 50 feet along this line, this is what the GPS coordinate would be over there. And then if we move, you know, up this, this 50 feet, that's what the GPS coordinate would be. And you can actually like look at your phone and be like, yeah, it is. And so that creates a, like a localized what I call regularized or 2D flat grid, you know, and that's using GPS off the shelf stuff. And so we sort of hijack that technology and create um, a surface that uh, we believe the earth is and then see if the, the, the measurements and um, stuff above water align with that grid. So I think that that might be possibly a better solution or a foundational thing to the drones because you know you may need that coordinate system anyway for the drones um you know to do uh, flight planning um flying it in a predictable path over water so you know this could be sort of a stepping stone to that test but if the test like that is done rigorously the drone is just reaffirming um what that test would already have highlighted that um those two coordinate systems are one and the same you know that um water uh, with all those measurements uh, all over Earth, um, you know, map to um, uh, that localized 2D grid. So, you know, to me, something like that is is very, very possible and, um, you know, elegant. And so the, the biggest issue will just be creating that localized 2D grid and then um, being able to extrapolate it out and have it work uh, in all directions because we're, we'd essentially be extrapolating that grid out uh, all across the surface of the earth and so you know it would have to hold everywhere and um, it would only hold if the earth was was flat because if the earth ever curved uh, that quote-unquote 2d flat grid that we just made with like straight lines going this way and straight lines going that way um, it, it would only hold if you extrapolate it out flat and and straight in both directions and um, it won't work if the earth is curved because in our grid we have not made a curved model. We're just assuming everything continues going on straight in both directions. And um, 
you know, the, the measurements over the water would show that, uh, that that's not true. And so, and the further and further you take those measurements over the water, um, the easier it would be to prove that it won't fit on that grid. And so, you know, it's, uh, it takes a lot, it takes the optics out of it, in my opinion, completely, unless optics are needed to create that localized um, 2D grid, um, flat, straight grid. But even that, you know, you probably just use laker, uh, lasers at a local level and, um, uh, you know, you're not really invoking a lot of, you know, wonky optics or things bending and all that kind of stuff. So to me, that's extremely doable and um, very much within our lifetime. And um, yeah, I think that's something we could even do with people around the world and just taking their iPhone and at least at, at a, as a starting point, collecting all the data points of um, what does our GPS read um, at water level next to a major water body. Uh, let's just assume on a calm day or we just take, you know, a bunch of different measurements and take the average uh, of what the water level is in case it varies quite a bit. But um, again, the further, the more data points you take locally, it obviously helps to average out, you know, um, variability. And then the more you take further and further away, uh, the less and less likely that um, you will, we will like mistake the shape of, of the earth. Hope everyone's doing well. Bye.